Let's rock and roll, boys. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Nintendo podcast. I'm Matt Schultz, and I'm here with my co-host and my only co-host today, Danny Jotelli. Hey, Matt. And um, we're excited because we're going to be doing some uh, pre-E3 uh, Nintendo Direct predictions, which is taking Pre-3. place... Pre-3. Pre-3, yep. Uh, this Tuesday at uh, 6 a.m. Pacific time, Austin time, uh, 8 a.m. our time. Austin uh, is going to do a short, potentially do a short video, or uh, excuse me, uh, pod, um, kind of following us up because we just couldn't match our schedules today, and that's okay. Um, but you, we sh- will be answering all of the same questions. So the format today is instead of just blurring out predictions, we're actually going to go step by step and ask certain questions around specific games um, that we either know about, are expecting to be there, um, Nintendo is either confirmed or uh, are just heavily rumored. So, yeah. First of all, Danny, how pumped yeah. are you uh, for E3? We just got to see Microsoft's press conference. There was a little, there's some rumors around a Nintendo uh, announcement or partnership. Obviously, we didn't see that. But uh, real quick, what, yeah. was your, what was your best takeaway from Microsoft's conference? So, fun fact, uh, I've only caught a couple snippets of it. Um, I like that they just uh, dug a little bit deeper into the Scarlet console um, the next generation of the console. Um, I see there was a little bit of stuff on the next Halo game. Um, so I, again, I just kind of reading the highlights. I haven't seen a lot of the footage yet. Um, but those are the two biggest things that excite me because um, I do own an Xbox and Halo is one of my favorite series of all time for video games. So right. um, that stuff enough gets me excited. I really haven't dove, divin, dived much deeper than that. Div did. Um, there, there it is. Yep, that's the word. Yep. Um, so that one. Pretty sure. Haven't jumped in too much further than that. Just been a busy weekend of travel. So, um, but yeah, anything that stuck out that you think is worth sharing to not only to the fan, but also to the Dan? <laughs> uh, well, uh, as someone who's like, I've owned Xboxes, I own an Xbox One S for a while when that first came out, and then I sold it. Um, I've always enjoyed Microsoft uh, as a company, especially, uh, um, you know, you know, I have there's I I've had several surfaces. Um, I think Windows 10 is great. Um, so I, I love what they do. I love Phil Spencer and what they do with gaming. So I'm always interested. Uh, the little bit of updates on Halo and just hearing the Halo soundtrack uh, play and like and just to see the cinematic trailer was super cool. I will say that most it was it was not a lot of gameplay. That's probably one of the biggest gripes I think on the internet. Um, a lot of like CGI footage, like cutscenes, not all, final footage. Yeah, all right. And it all seemed really, really, really cool. Like there's definitely a lot coming. Like Microsoft, you know, is doubling down on you know investing first in first party. Yeah, and putting you know buy, buying a bunch of studios and. And I think we're going to start to see the fruits of that. And especially, I think like the future looks bright for them, especially if they're launching, you know, Scarlet with the new Halo um, and whatever, whatever other games uh, or in the Blind Forest. Um, well, it's called something different now, but like the sequel to that looked really good. Um, there are a couple of games that just looked like really cool. Um, so, yeah, it's exciting. Also, Lego Forza. That was really cool. But this is not a Microsoft podcast. This is a Nintendo podcast. So <laughs> we're going to go ahead and jump into our uh, Nintendo uh, predictions. And what we're going to do is, like, like I said, we have a list of, of different game titles or kind of like content areas. And then we're just going to kind of go back and forth with questions. Typically, they're like, will it be there? When will it come out? What's Any a new, new feature? Big features. Yeah. 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 So let's go ahead and start with Animal Crossing Switch. All right. So the big controversy with Animal Crossing is that uh, it wasn't mentioned in Nintendo's recent tweet, which was, you know, showcasing like, here's what we're going to have uh, on the show floor and be playable. And then there was that like, and more dot, dot, dot. Um, now, we don't know if Animal Crossing is going to be playable. It's it's a lot of people have you know debated around. Is it a game that's, you know, uh, really easy to show off in a like demo it i mean that's like i mean animal crossing is a game you spend hours just kind of doing nothing almost like you're moseying about like living your little animal crossing life like 
like it's not that easy to show the full like get a sense of what this game is about though you would imagine a lot of reporters there have probably played animal crossing it's a very old franchise at this point um uh it's still something that like if you've got reporters there who've never played it you know what are you gonna do like go fishing in a river and then like your five minutes are up and then you have to leave um whereas other games you know they have a boss or some sort of fight that you can you know take part in or some sort of specific feature uh, one thing i thought they would do if they did show it on the show floor was like show off a new feature around like your house uh <laughs> animal crossing you can famously funk you know like build their you, you kind of build out your house but you also like furnish it and like change up the furniture and every iteration they've added some new way to kind of like create the feng shui of your house so yeah. um anyways so first and foremost will it be shown at the direct and then if so, the question is, what's the release date for this thing? Um, specifically because we've got now uh, Zelda, which may or may not come out uh, in the November, December range. And we have two big Pokemon games coming out uh, for Switch on November 15th. So, Danny, will it be shown at, uh, in the conference uh, direct? You're now also being reminded that it wasn't directly mentioned in the tweet. I'm much more thinking this is likely going to be in there. And one more thing, part of the end. Oh, okay, um, interesting. Because like it, I, going into it, I think we all expected this is like a big franchise for them. This is a big heavy hitter. It's like, okay, we didn't get the Metro out this year. Uh, or Metroid, I'm sorry. Um, but, you know, Animal Crossing, Luigi's Mansion, Link's Awakening, and Pokemon. You know, we really want to, you know, hammer this home that like, hey, we didn't get Metroid, but we're still making these four great titles. I, you'd like to think if they weren't firing out the Metroid that they would really be like pushing everything that they had just like front and foremost. Like we're not hiding anything. We are just going uh, gangbusters out. Um, so I'm thinking they're trying to reserve this as like the we have a surprise, even though everyone's like, but we were expecting it anyways. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's interesting because every year they've done, you know, they had a huge uh, showing for one particular game, right? We've mentioned this in past podcasts. You know, Breath of the Wild had the whole show floor. They've gone mm-hmm. and done these like amazing like sculptures and like set pieces. They, they create the world that the game is about. Um, so we've seen that with Breath of the Wild and Hyrule. Uh, we've seen that with Mario Odyssey the following mm-hmm. year. Last year it was completely Smash Brothers. You know, they had all of those really cool like life size like. Uh, uh, like either assist trophies, uh, certain weapons, like memorabilia that the like the characters wear, and like DK's tie was in there, like stuff like that, right? So, what is that going to be for Nintendo? And for me, I think it's going to be Animal Crossing. Like, I think this is their big temple game, mostly because I feel that. Uh, so, I think it is going to be shown. Um, and truthfully, I think they're going to open up the the direct with it. It's just going to be like, boom, there it is. Uh, like we're starting with Animal Crossing. Like Tom Nook's gonna be like, "Oh, hello, you're back. Oh, uh, just in time. I just finished up my project and everything's ready to go. Like, come on yeah. in. Let me show you yeah. what's new." Yeah. Um, so I could totally see that happening. Um, and uh, so I'm really excited about that. Uh, but I think then that's gonna like their show floor is gonna be like you're in the village. There's gonna be like trees and little animal characters to take pictures with. Like, you know, all the all the um, media that are gonna be there are gonna have a field day, especially if they're AC fans, because I think it's going to be a whole freaking town. Um, that's what I can see them doing. Uh, release date specifically, I think it's going to be... I've, I've been ha- I'm going back and forth between like uh, late to mid-fall to late winter. Um, and by winter, I mean like that, like Christmas time, like December release. It's weird yeah. because like... I don't know that they wouldn't release. They would release a game in December. I, I figured, like you know, with Black Friday and everything, they're trying to like just take advantage of the you know shopping experience as much as possible. So anything that's like after that November fifteenth release date for like a major game, it's hard for me to believe that they would release something that late uh, into the holiday season and not capitalize on making as much money as possible. So that's why I'm like, okay, well, if it's not going to come at, like, and they have released games at the same time as Smash before. Um, however, that was Smash on the 3DS. Something, I think another game came out at the same time on the same day. So yeah. that, that makes me feel like it's either like a 
like a, a fall game, like a big fall game, or it's going to be 2020, which is weird because they said 2019 in the like pr- in, in the one of the previous directs. Yeah, it was in the, it was a, 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 the Smash Brothers uh, direct at the yeah. very end of it. You know, he Tom Nook's there watching Isabel, the Yeah, right. And uh, and you know, so it says 2019, and when, when we got those like 2016s and 2017s with uh, with Breath of the Wild. Um, you know, they came out and said, like, we're sorry, we're not going to make this. I don't see them saying we're sorry in an E3 presentation. That and is- not for Animal Crossing. Like, for the, it's not, it is a big franchise. Like, for Metroid and for Zelda, like, yeah, you need to put out, like, hey, we're sorry, we're not going to make no, it. No, 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 I think they would do it for this one. I you mean, think this is, so? Yes, this, is, this game sells, like... 12 million copies every time it's out, like at least yeah. every time it's out. It's a, this is a big franchise for them. Like it's not chump ch- and they know fans want it. And I don't think that Nintendo is, uh, I don't think it really matters like how big their game is. I think if it's like one of their staple core franchises, like we've, they've shown us that they're just going to apologize. Like it's, Animal Crossing sells more than Metroid, uh, oh. easily. So interesting. Um, I just feel you, like that's yeah. Gonna happen. Like I feel like we are there. If they were going to apologize for a delay, they would tell us right then and there. Um, so I, I, truthfully, I don't know. I'm gonna just say mid fall, and that's gonna be like my recorded official response. But uh, yeah, I guess we'll uh, go from there. <laughs> nice. Um, but anyways, in terms of like new features and stuff, um, I, I don't know. I just hope the town is bigger. I think it's. I hope like the amount of space that you get to explore um, and and live in is just a much larger landscape. I hope it's more dynamic. Uh, in the past game, they introduced a ton of new features, including adding things uh, like being the mayor of your town and setting city ordinances, mm-hmm. while also like building new things in town. You had to, of course, be the only person like pretty much funding all of these new projects, but right. it was it was really cool. I mean, it, it was so much creativity from the whole community around how people built their towns. I think it's going to be very much focused on community development and online play. Um, I think that's going to be like a big uh, temple game for the Switch Online. Uh, That's going to be a big feature. And my my hope would be, I think think for for sure we're going to get something like that, um, where they're going to be like, and you can do this all online with your friends. I want you to be able to visit each other's towns and give access to friends to visit your town, even when they are not playing or online, uh, which I think would be really cool. Um, I think we're there technology wise. I think we can do it. Um, I'm sure Nintendo could find a way, um, but that's what I want to see. And I think we'll get something along the lines of like, you know, what co-op would look like online, but we'll see. Cause in the original games you could play together in the same town, but you were, it was like, I was playing for a little bit and then I logged off and you logged into your account and then your character would come out and do stuff. And like we could eat like if I came home from work and you were like playing <laughs> or you were done playing and I jumped on after you like, you know, this it's like a saved town. Whatever you did affects whatever I can do. However, it was on the same memory card. Right. And in the in the recent games, you could be in the same town at the same time. Like you you to open your gate and someone else could come over. Um, and you could F around, but I think that what would be nice is of like, oh, like you stopped by, I had no idea, and you left me a letter or you left me some like furniture or you like helped me out in the town in some way, and then I got to kind of see that after the fact. But with the friend features, you would be able to like, first of all, like if like someone was like a best friend with you on on Switch, right? You like kind of, you know, you know, right, right. Like, that's what they are. Um, then you can like set like parameters for what they can or can't do in your town or something like along those lines. So sure. some people would dig holes and yank flowers and chop down trees. Like some people can be assholes. So, oh, Pika. Um, <laughs> anyways, any thoughts on features? I know, I know, I know you, you haven't played Animal Crossing before. So, uh, uh, like, is this something you might be excited about? Potentially. Yeah. Like that sort of, of, uh, um, stock management and like uh the the different like inventory stuff and like um yeah obviously like building um world building kind of games like stuff like that i enjoy um 
I, I think I could be, and especially now that I'm like back on the train with Switch, again for for a long time fan. Um, I have uh, the Switch. I haven't owned a Nintendo system since the GameCube um, or any games for that matter as well. So this could be one of those franchises that I just never gave a chance because I didn't have the opportunity to that. Now I give the opportunity to. Right. Um, Yeah. yeah. Tim, Tim, actually, our mutual friend, uh, got really into it when he first picked up a 3DS and I was playing New Leaf. And I'm like, hey, you got to check this out. And he's like, what is this? It's it, it's one of those games that I feel like I've had a lot. I know a lot of people, a very eclectic group of people who all love it. Um, and yeah, so I'd be really interesting if it is shown and it does come out. I'm definitely going to push it on you yeah. and Austin. Um, I can imagine. <laughs> so let's go to the next one. Uh, so this is a confirmed game to be playable on the show floor. Luigi's Mansion 3 Mario! played all the original, uh, the first two. Uh, mm-hmm. the, the first one being on the GameCube as a launch title, uh, infamous mm-hmm. at this point. Mario! Mario. Uh, <laughs> the second one being on the 3DS, um, Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon, and mm-hmm. that had several smaller mansions that you could go in um, and basically explore. And I also really, really enjoyed Dark Moon. Dark Moon's a little more divisive among the fan base, um, but for like a pocket pocketable version of Luigi's Mansion like the graphics were really great the 3D was used well like it was it, it was just developed really nicely like it looks really good and it play it was it was really fun and like you could you could you could play like small parts of it and then put it away and not you know, like not have to invest all this time like complete a mission and then put it away um, right right i wish it was bigger i wish it was longer um but here we go we got Luigi's Mansion 3 so obviously we know it's going to be shown um, mm-hmm. when do you think it's coming out, Danny? You know, it's, it's so tough answering this now because we are in June and yeah. pretty much all of these games in this first half that we've, we're going to talk about, um, we've been told are coming out before, and especially a couple of the games in the second half of our conversation today are coming out before the end of 2019. It's going to be a crowded uh, late summer all the way until the be. early winter. It, it should be one big game a month. I mean, that's how right. you, they should be doing it. So we got so, November taken up. So what? Right. I just think, what what do you think is like the bigger game that they're like, okay, we want this one to have some breathing room. Like we want this one to be on the shelf alone for a while to really like, my thought is Pokemon. Like I'm thinking they want to give like a two week buffer on either end of that date to like let people just like prepare the hype. And then two weeks to like yeah. everybody like flush well, around to, to get their copy. I don't think it is a matter of like Pokemon's not gonna be cannibalized by anything but itself. Um or a major Zelda release. You know, like right, it, Pokemon will be will be fine. I think so for me, like this is good like I think this is a fall Halloween time game. Like they are gonna come out with it around that time. Yeah. I yeah. think it and I think, you know, Halloween, yes, is at the end of the at the end of October, but I think they're going to lead with it in late September, mid to late September, and so that it's relevant for a longer period of time in terms of like the spookiness. And I think oh, that's yeah. so, so I think that's what they're gonna write out. Uh so totally I, do the Stranger Things uh, marketing like they did for season two, where like that season came out on Halloween. Right. And like the, all the yeah. trailers were like the kids like, you know, dressed as Ghostbusters and like uh, yeah. doing Halloween things. But they I think could this totally will, ape that, yeah. Right. So I really feel like it's going to be I, I want to like I, I really think it's going to be late September, but just for, you know, the podcasting, it, I think it's going to be just to say October is like going to be all about dark or not dark. Moon, Luigi's Mansion three. Um, but uh, like any thoughts on features or the story or what it's going to what's going to be like? You know, the thing that worried me the most when we saw that brief clip in one of the most recent directs. Was that just like the graphics again? Not that the Switch is any sort of graphical powerhouse. It's nice. It gets the bare minimum HD level of HD ness. Um, but just the brief clip we saw of Luigi's Mansion 3, I was like, ooh, that looks like it would maybe look like it fit the Wii U. Like it just looked a little like the graphics looked a little like not yeah, they, polished they, they, up they to Switch were standards. Pop, right. So I'm hoping that was just like a hey, this is like our not finished footage um and by the time you get it it's gonna be a lot prettier a lot more uh it's gonna run a lot smoother it's gonna look more polished more colorful more vibrant yeah. more rounded edges um that's my biggest thing because when i saw that footage i was like are they showing the one from the 
3DS? Is that what they're showing? <laughs> yeah. Right now? What am I yeah, looking at? It, it definitely were some. There were well, the thing was like there were p- things in the trailer that looked so good in the environment, and then like some other things that were like looked very basic and choppy. And obviously, like we got shown that pretty early. I think they're definitely like Nintendo. If anything, they release very solid, polished games. So mm-hmm. even if it's not the most like beautiful looking game, I think it'll right. still look really nice. And especially like. Think about Pokemon Switch, right? Um, you know, like not you know, it's not it's not like you like you're looking for photorealism. Like it and it definitely isn't Breath of the Wild. Yet. <laughs> yet. <laughs> yet. But when we pulled it when we pulled it up on my Switch uh, in handheld mode and I was scrolling on the eShop through some of the f- photos and it showed like some game a gameplay screenshot, like it as if it were on my Switch, it looked really good, especially yeah. in handheld. So I can totally yeah. see like I could like even the the 3DS game Dark Moon looked really good for 3DS. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I'm not I'm not surprised it's how it looked initially, but I I would be surprised if it still looked that way. Um, yeah. In terms of like like a story, I feel like you know you kind of initially we got that silhouette of that really tall mansion, and yeah. I'm really thinking it's going to be like just a massive building like a ho- like a hotel right like so let's go you know like disneyland um uh so like tower of terror-esque like but it's going to be like towers within towers it's going to be like advancing levels of this thing um i hope it's that i hope it's massive i hope it's not very linear also i hope you can kind of like explore different rooms and take on different parts of the mansion as you would open creepy world <laughs> right like open yeah open air mansion that's what i want <laughs> um but and uh I, I it sounds like you're gonna be able to play as different characters or at least it look that way um like maybe you save different characters or you call them up on you know his little poltergeist phone that he uses um mm-hmm. i love that ringtone shout out to jose otero who used to be the uh NVC uh, um, host before he moved on to Nintendo. His timer on his iPhone was the Professor E. Gad like did, 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 like little tone. Oh, it's so good. Awesome. Wow. We'll put it. Awesome. We'll put it in right here. Um, yes, he will. <laughs> all right. So let's let's move on to uh, our next game, uh, Link's Awakening. So confirmed for 2019 was a huge surprise of the last direct that we had. Everyone's yeah. talking about it. Very different looking uh, game, but seems so far to be kind of a, re- uh, a good shot for shot remake of what the original one was. So, yeah. Danny, thoughts on release date window and any more details we might get on some new features of the game? My thought is this is a December. This is a holiday. This feels like a gift uh, right. sort of sort of game, um, whereas Whereas uh, Sword and Shield is like you're building up to Black Friday, everybody really just treating themselves. Um, <laughs> yeah. This feels like a game like it would just be a cherished gift. So I'm thinking this is like early to mid December of a release for Link's Awakening. Um, yeah, as far as other details, um, maybe just showing a little bit more gameplay footage. Maybe if they show some kind of co-op stuff. Um, I heard that, you know, there's those rumors that that may or may not be a thing. Um Otherwise, you know, it's already an established game like the the game already exists in the world, uh, just not in this HD version. So maybe a few more screenshots, a few more seconds of gameplay, Um, because even the the brief little glimpse we got in the last full direct looks great, looked beautiful, looked pretty, pretty finished and polished. Um, So that's that's kind of where I'm at with with everything and kind of what I'm expecting. How about you? Yeah, uh, I think it's um, I think it's going to have some sort of co-op piece to it yeah Mm -hmm. i i think it's going to be like and like some kind of like sort of social sharing feature i don't know if it's like i could like zelda is really good at at uh kind of adding these like new little features to some of their smaller versions of of the zelda franchise um and experimenting in that way um like you know we've had four swords which was a zelda shared adventure we also had um uh, a game that i really enjoyed which was, um, oh man, I'm forgetting. It was on the 3DS, but you, it involved three three links. Um, oh man, Austin's going to put it in here right now. Yes, Triforce Heroes, may it rest in peace. 
you know, three players online. And I don't know if this game's going to be set on it, but I think you'd be able to bring in someone or have some kind of sort of local uh, co-op uh, through the game. That, that's if you kind chose of a, to. Yeah, if you chose to. Yeah. Um, I think that's going to be a new feature of the game. Um, I think we're going to get a much better look at Hyrule. And mm-hmm. there's, it's going to involve like, here's an online feature. And then they're going to also show off like some quirky new features about the game. But it's aesthetically, I think we're just going to get more of that beautiful looking, like almost like polygonal toy looking like Zelda. And we'll officially get a release date, which I'm going to say is going to be, oh man, uh, let's just say early December is what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, yeah. If, if not late November for like Black Friday, like a week or two after uh, Pokemon, Pokemon Switch is pretty much what I'm what I'm thinking. Wow. Um, it's again, it's a it's Zelda, but it's a smaller Zelda. So I'm right, not thinking right. it's like, it, you know, it needs it's to be, be gangbusters here. Yeah, right. I mean, it will sell well. I, I think that's oh, sure. Coming off of Breath of the Wild, anything with Zelda on it is going to sell well. But yeah, yeah. So um, that kind of leads us to our next big Nintendo uh, franchise, which is Super Smash Brothers. Okay, so we've, yeah. we've got one of the five DLC characters. Uh, uh, Sakurai Joker. Yeah. Sakurai confirmed we are getting more details on the DLC character during the direct. Uh, he did so during the Smash Invitational, which was yesterday or the day before, uh, as of the uh-huh. recording. So, who's it going to be? What are those details going to be? Uh, it's it's happening in the direct. So who who who's it going to be, Danny? Here we go. Man, I who do I think it's going to be? Who do I actually want it to be? Um, I know Air Airdrick Airdick from uh, is it Dragon Quest? Yep. Um, he's been rumored again. That's a series that I I, I really don't know anything about, which means it's probably more likely to show up, um, <laughs> similar to how Joker showed up. Again, I would like a Spyro. I would love a Spyro. That would be I really would, cool. I know a lot of people would love Banjo. And there's, you know, Microsoft and Nintendo are the only two big players at this E3 conference. So uh, <laughs> what better way to celebrate uh, this little love connection than, uh, you know, getting some Banjo back in the game. Um, yeah, you know, and, and then there's always the part of me was like, I don't know if I want Master Chief or Arbiter in there, but like... I'd like to try it. Let's see. Let's see what happens um, <laughs> from the Halo series. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. I really, I'm really up in the air, which I think is Sakurai's goal. And if he, that's his goal, he's he's nailing it. So how about you? Um, I honestly think that they're going to, like, this is going to be the showcase of whatever that Microsoft partnership is. Mm-hmm. So whether it's a Banjo, Zooey, or uh whoever the the minecraft guy is you know oh the, steve yeah steve right so um Darn steve I, I can see, especially because a microsoft conference we just got the minecraft announcement for micro uh, minecraft dungeons which is yeah. a on like cooperative online uh you know version of minecraft which oh, that's pretty cool. are, it actually did look really cool and like is it a whole new game or an expansion of minecraft whole, whole new game from the oh, minecraft team oh well yeah. done well done and I, that was another game. I'm like, wow, that's really cool. And sure enough, Nintendo tweeted out, and they didn't say this in the presentation, but Nintendo tweeted out the same trailer, but at the very end, it shows the Switch icon, and it's coming to Switch, uh, which, you know, Minecraft m- games have come to Switch um, and other Nintendo consoles and a lot of different consoles and platforms. But uh, I could see that that being kind of an impetus for, you know, Steve to show up in... Um, you know, in Smash. Um, yeah. So that would be super cool. Also, Nintendo uh, was mentioned in Microsoft's, uh, like, here's what to look out for, like, all the, things Microsoft that are, like, the briefing you know, schedule. E3, yeah. right. Nintendo's Direct is listed in there. So, like, we are definitely getting some sort of, like, Lovebird connection shout out thing happening and i think it's going to be in the form of smash dlc uh honestly though that's like all i can think of i i I have no idea like joker was out of nowhere i mean anything this is just gonna this is all just us like wishing what we what we would want but like that's like the closest i can get to like a potentially accurate prediction right right yeah we'll see um 
But anything else? Do you think we're going to see any new features in Smash? Any sort of updates? Um, any new stages that aren't relative to a character? No, I'm, I'm genuinely hoping they nerf Zelda 100%. <laughs> that's just me i i have still to this day not beaten my roommate since we got ultimate uh because zelda just went from being like okay i can go toe to toe with her in uh smash wii u I, I i can't beat her so i'm every time there's a new patch coming out for smash i'm like nerf zelda nerf zelda nerf Here's zelda the thing. you could probably beat her using a different character Mamma mia. i've used four five different characters <laughs> repeatedly you just gotta get uh, better danny <laughs> anyways and that's the show thanks that's for joining what, us fan we appreciate it thanks austin's now. mom yep. thanks austin's yeah. mom always shout out um okay so uh yeah uh, uh maybe maybe there'll be some more i don't know that there's gonna be any major patch and if there was i feel like they would have done it already before the like invitational happened um maybe i mean in the last patch pichu got tanked I don't know if you saw those patch lists. Yeah. It was yeah, like yeah. six or seven things for Pichu. And now Pichu, like, same thing. Pichu, I stood a better chance against with my roommate. This patch came out, and now it's like even slash maybe I have a little bit of an upper edge. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know. We'll get anything more for Smash. Sakurai had an opportunity, I think, at the Smash Invitational to then do like a, you know, but he did mention DLC will be, you know, a part of the direct. So that's, that's the best we can hope for. Um mm-hmm. But another area uh, of interest is actually the console itself. So the Nintendo Switch. Are we going to see any hardware? I think I believe Nintendo actually came out and said we won't wouldn't see any hardware uh, in the Nintendo Direct or at E3. So like, yeah, so it depends on who you ask. Are you asking Nintendo? Are you asking the <laughs> Wall Street Journal? Are you asking yeah. Nikkei or Nikai, the the uh, Japanese yeah. blog? I mean, I personally think that uh, it's it's more of a possibility than it's not. Nintendo's yep. lied before. Yep. Uh, you know, we've gotten just so many rumors about this and so much like what seems to be like folks who are active in the industry who typically have insider knowledge of this stuff who are saying it's coming. Like, it's hard to see it not coming. Um, here's what my prediction is. They're going to show it, but it's going to be in the treehouse. It's going to be a treehouse announcement, um, and because they do have some treehouse announcements, you know, like as we've talked about before, a brief like history of it, yeah. Right. Amiibo have come out, uh, you know, Metroid, most notably, uh, Metroid: Samus Returns 3DS was announced at uh, in the in the treehouse, so that was really cool, um, and that was when we had we had just gotten like a Metroid Prime for like you know teaser. Right. Um, so I definitely think that if it shows up, it will show up in the treehouse and it'll be the Switch Mini um, and it's going to come packaged with uh, one of the games that that, that was just announced. Uh, I think it's going to have like a like it's going to be like their Nintendo 2DS, like let's get more Switches into more people's hands right as the summer is getting started. Um, and I don't know what that what that game is going to be. Uh, maybe it'll be Mario Kart. I mean... It probably would be a Mario Kart Deluxe, uh, if anything. Probably a Breath of the Wild edition. Um, but that's that's my take. What about you? I mean, yeah, I think the, the I could see that. I could see them just kind of like casually showing it off at the treehouse, and then like, oh, oh, you mean this thing? And then uh, they're like, oh, well, more to come on that. And then we get into, like a full fledged direct, probably like end of summer. You know, explaining right. the the purpose of of the Switch Mini, and then yeah. They'll do a bunch of launch bundles. Um, they'll probably have a great holiday bundle with like the either the Pokemon SKUs. Um, though that would be a great pairing, especially harkening back to uh, the Pokemon games on any of the Game Boy lifespan, the 3DS lifespan, things like that. Um, I think the mini, whatever it's called, the cheaper version, uh, I think is very likely by the end of the year. Um, just again, based off of all the leaks and rumors within the industry, within people covering the manufacturing process, the uh, the slightly updated one that we heard those rumors about, it's like not a full-fledged Switch Pro, but it's like a new Switch regular. Um, I think that one's probably not going to be till 2020. Because um, right. I think the whole point of the Switch Mini is, is like like you said, those people who have thought about getting it, but just haven't gotten it yet. Or it's like a family. They already own one. 
and they have you know little little sister and brother are also wanting their own so they get like the the mini version because it's cheaper um maybe a little bit more durable plastic um stuff like that so that's that's my take on potential new hardware yeah okay very cool um well moving on uh we just talked about metroid a little bit let's talk about it again metroid prime 4 (laughs) of course are we going to see anything relative to this franchise at e3 yes go it'll be the new title banner image that's it so the same thing we got last time except, <laughs> except without a, a title. newer version of what we got last time they're <laughs> like all right everyone let's start this again metroid Ugh. for a second time they're like it's, see we used calibri font instead yeah. of times new roman you know it's like gross. but really um, though for right. reals this time yeah, okay. I mean, it's they only just did that uh, apology direct. Uh, uh, how know. long ago? Like yeah. two and a half, three months ago. So like what? Again, we don't know at the point when they made that apology, how far along they had been in that process of restarting. Um, I I really don't think Metroid four. I don't think we're going to get anything like okay. really anything. Um, maybe, hopefully for many, many lifetime fans as well as myself looking to hop on the bandwagon hopefully uh the first three you know hd remastered as a bundle um we talked about i think briefly i can't remember if it was in the last podcast or just in person there's some unnamed uh on a list of a bunch of unnamed games for the switch one of them is listed as like 200 dollars for the SKU. you're like what could possibly cost that much I don't know if all three games would they would charge you two hundred dollars for, but like that just kind of gets my brain flowing. There's another one that costs eighty, so maybe that one is the one that's all three games in one bundle. Um, so as far as all things Metroid, that's kind of where my head's at as far as what to expect. How about you? Well, so I, I know what you were talking about this, and I was like, well, I could see that expensive one being Fire Emblem Three Houses, the two hundred dollar uh, one. Well, yeah, like or I don't mean if you were gonna buy all three of them. And they're all about sixty bucks or fifty bucks. Like, uh, it well, makes sense. The, yeah, I, I still want to see how that would be. You know, uh, like that. I would still want to be a deal. You know, at the end of the day, I don't know what that's for. Uh, that could two hundred dollars. It was it for a game. It could be a console. It did say uh, the leak for the GameStop listings did say games, which again, because the Switch Mini, that's the perfect price point, right. you know, right? Right. Um, that's uh, I'd order one. Yeah. I will if something, and Lord knows, Austin will do the same damn thing. If we, if they announce any hardware, I am pre-ordering it on that day, like as so, soon as it comes out. And I so. want to have this conversation with Austin too. So you buy a Switch Mini, are you going to get rid of your current Switch? Oh no, my current Switch just stays at home. And the Switch Mini comes with me everywhere else I go. So the Switch Mini is your Surface Go. <laughs> and the regular yeah. Switch is your Surface Pro. <laughs> A Surface Pro, Surface Bug, whatever you want it to be. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. I got like you. For, for me, yeah, absolutely. I mean, As also, long as they let you cross-pollinate your saves and your data. <laughs> well, yeah. I, well, I mean, that's, that's a genuine thing to keep in mind. It absolutely is. And in fact, that's <laughs> probably a reason why I'm like, uh maybe I should have bought, in, bought uh, cartridges versus everything online. But... Besides the point, um, I just love new new hardware. But for yeah. for Metroid, I do think I think the trilogy exists. the The trilogy exists. I just think that they're they're probably just going to wait to bring that out whenever it makes most sense or is most relevant. It would be great if they're like, "Hey, this is coming out too." Um, you know, if that drops at E three, I think that would be huge. That would be a, 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 a an easy win for Nintendo uh, in that area, especially since we haven't played. A real metroid game on a console in a long time um specifically like a home console not a, a handheld not um and a new game not a remake of a uh, you know of a past game right. so yeah that would be super interesting um i don't but i, I can also see like my 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 prediction is we're not getting anything metroid prime 4 related at all so yeah. i think we're the same mind for that yeah um all right moving on uh how are we feeling um about oh man what was the next thing i had was uh oh the oh, other retro project yes whatever the like <laughs> whatever that's going to be clearly we've talked about this before they are moving on to you know full steam ahead into metroid prime 4 right and they have been for some time and then scrapped it and hopefully reusing some things so it's not too difficult but 
they've been working on something a lot longer than that um, between, you know, uh, Donkey Kong um, and Tropical Freeze. Yeah. Yeah. And and now. So what is it? And will we see it? Uh, Danny, what are your thoughts? I mean, so the the big rumor for for fan to know is that it's it's been the rumor is that it's Star Fox to the point where it was sometime early last fall. Everyone was like, I remember watching and reading a lot of like you know Kotaku and IGN and VC stuff. They're like, you know, any day now we're we're waiting for that. You know, is it is it this week? By the time you hear our next episode, will it will we have Star Fox racing? Um, and then like it never never came. Many weeks went yeah. by. Many many episodes. Many articles have been written. Um, so who knows? And, and I, I mean, we joked, but the more and more I think about it, I'm like, maybe the DLC for Starlink was like the Star Fox racing. Like <laughs> I get it, you know, um, cause the Xbox and PS4 versions also have racing sans Star Fox, but I'm like, what else would the, isn't that, would that just be a weird coincidence that Star Fox has never been involved in racing at all. And then the span of one year, it's a, it gets like two <laughs> racing games. Yeah, um, it does seem a little far fetched, but but still could be very true. And like I'm just yeah. thinking about that rumor, right? It, like Nintendo ha- like went from like blazing speed in terms of like game releases, major game releases, to a kind of a major lull and slowdown. Like 2019, we've had uh, Yoshi uh, Crafted World. We've had. Uh, uh, was Kirby Alex all, Kirby All Star Allies? Yeah, that was, was, last, was that last year or early in the year? Um, yeah. We've we're getting Mario Maker uh, in a couple weeks, but like, what uh, else has what has like? It's just been slow. It's been DLC like, for existing games, really. Right, exactly. And obviously, we got Smash like you know later, right, like at later the end of 2018. 2018. But yeah. still, like it's they've been kind of riding that Smash wave with the Switch, and of course, the success of their other games, and, and of course, the the un- insane amount of indies that are doing so well, quality indies. But it makes sense for me that like if uh, like a retro game would show up, that like something like there's just gonna that they're just gonna from June through november december they're just gonna hammer out these amazing games quality games to us and i hope that it is that Star Fox game i hope something from retro is shown if it's not Star Fox, i really 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 would like it to be a brand new ip um and and you know specifically a brand new ip from a western studio um i think would be really interesting you know arms and splatoon Two most of their most recent like big IP in the last five years that have really um, taken shape. In fact, five years ago they announced Splatoon um, during that direct. Was it 2014? Uh, during that yeah. E3, and I was so excited. I'm like, "What is this? This is cool. It's coming from the youth and like you know, and Nintendo that are you know a lot of the young talent are bringing this up. Same with Arms, um, but." I hope that they give retro kind of like free reign on some sort of project. And yeah. that's like that. That's my hope. Um, uh, but I will say, yes, we will see retros uh, thing and it's going to come out late summer, early fall. That, that's right. my prediction. There it is. There it is. Well, as far as crazy projects to predict, uh, do you think going into the next project, uh, anything from the Wii U era is going to move over? Um, yeah, yes. I think they anything more, I should say. This is difficult because uh obviously we've seen some great Zeldas get ported uh to the to the Wii U. Um and it's like why haven't we seen those on Switch now? You know, like why why isn't you know Wind Waker HD and Z- so I would not be surprised if we saw a like um like a Zelda collection bundled for maybe the that's Switch. the 200 hundred dollar skew right so it'll be twilight princess hd it'll be hd plus uh, plus <laughs> that you know what that it really could be um yeah it could be yeah hd plus plus on the switch on the go um yeah. <laughs> wind waker and then possibly and hopefully what a lot of people want to see is a remake of skyward sword a lot of people miss skyward sword it was uh on you know it was on the switch or excuse me it was on the wii u um and use the the one to one motion of the of the Wii U uh, controller. The sword mm-hmm. thing was accurate. Very linear story, but the story itself was very cool. And you could tell Nintendo was trying to toy with the concept of like what 
a vaster open world might look like, even though it wasn't open world at all. Um, Leading into Breath of the Wild, yeah. Yeah. Dungeons in that game, super great. The boss fights were super fun. Um, Overworld was lacking, but still a very a very great Zelda game and uh one I remember I like 100% of it like it was it was the first Zelda game I'd played in such a long time and I was and I had never played uh our beaten Wind Waker on the GameCube so I was so happy when that came out in HD and to be able to play that and that game stands like we just need those games on Switch so yeah maybe that skew Danny is a Zelda uh bundle, bundle. yeah if that's the case do you think one of the games bundled in there is an Ocarina of Time remake. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, maybe. I don't know. It's hard to tell. I I don't. It's like with NES, SNES, and everything kind of leading up to like 64. And obviously, this was like the remake was on the, the 3DS. Like, I don't know what like they're leaving for whatever their vision is for this, the online service subscription thing. Um, and what they want to like port like Nintendo just needs to get their ish together around that like like just take a page out of Microsoft's book and realize that people will pay to have access to all these games this grand library like and you're throwing online with it great like we don't even people aren't even asking for that but like they need a solution to the virtual console and to me that would make sense so it's hard to tell like what if they if they're trickling it out if they're going to show SNES games now like what they want to do in the future Obviously, I don't think a port of a game on 3DS, which was on 64, it's hard to tell if that would be in there, but that it, it, it potentially could be. I just don't think it falls in the in the same vein. Like they, I feel like they would have to have done a lot under the hood to get it to work um, how they want to. But yeah, a Zelda collection, you know, Master Sword collection, whatever they want to call it, like like would be super cool, uh, especially those three games. Um post ocarina uh and majora's mask um i also wouldn't be surprised if we saw some sort of like ocarina slash majora's mask thing in the future whether it's a remake or uh it becomes playable online i i don't know but not to get ahead of ourselves i thought that was a (laughs) pretty hot take though that that 199 bundle thing could be like hey here's all the zeldas on the switch um at least the ones you the the big console ones Right, um, right. What do we have next, Andy? Though, Wait, so we uh, got uh, coming up next are two games that I'm not too, you know, uh, beyond their their involvement in Smash, I'm not too familiar with, um, as far as just the series history goes. Uh, Bayonetta three and Pikmin four. Um, right. So, yeah. So, so those are two games that have been uh, teased. Um, in one way or another, we saw that Bayonetta 3 uh, v- super cool trailer. Uh, I've played through uh, uh, one. I didn't beat two yet, but I, I had both of them on uh, the Wii U. Um, but it's a very fun game. The reason I actually haven't beaten it yet is because your roommate uh, uh, t- had had mine forever. Um, oh boy! And just gave it back like not too long ago. So I just, and I just haven't had the time to. And my Wii U is at my girlfriend's now, and <laughs> so I would love to and see one and two. Taking your Pika, right, 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 right. Um, I would love to see one and two get uh, brought up to the Switch, um, and and then th- I I don't know that we'll see it, um, but it does seem like it's kind of about time, you know, like they've had put like at least to see some sort of gameplay footage um, and maybe a release window, like a year show 2020 up there. I don't, I don't know. Like, like, but I would, I would put money down on like, we'll get some Bayonetta three news. Uh, mm-hmm. However, with Pikmin four, Oh my God, everyone's losing their minds about this because Miyamoto, however many years ago was like basically a slip slip. Like, Oh, the, like, Pikmin 4 is basically done. And it was like people are speculating. Oh, did he mean that like Pikmin, uh, you know, platformer game that came out on the 3DS that like kind of sucked because that was shortly later announced. Um, And people don't know that's what he actually meant. But he said Pikmin 4 versus the fourth installment in the like overall Pikmin franchise. Mm. Like, but this game... the they had the assets are there from the the Wii U that 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 game was so good. If anything, we need a Pikmin collection or some sort of Pikmin 
like you know one and two to show up on the switch because those games are so fun and danny you've never played a pikmin game you would that's like that that's a game that i, th- I can see you getting into because it is like pretty much real-time strategy um yeah. with this army of pikmin or ants <laughs> <laughs> um and oh gosh it was just it's so cool it's been enough time it's hard for me to say definitively if we'd see it or not uh because it's been so under the radar a lot of people are predicting it's going to be a sh- one of those shadow drops where mm-hmm. basically they announce it and boom it's it's actually out right now like as of the end of the presentation um that would be amazing but uh yeah uh, that's a big wild card for me i i can't answer that question like oh probably not but if we saw it, it'd be super cool so yeah so when do you th- if if it gets announced between that and bayonetta 3 where do you think they land in the schedule Oh, I mean, honestly, I think that it gets announced for now. Like, it's a summer release. Like, so, it's, so it is a, it, it's just an immediate here. drop. It. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and it's available now. Yeah. I mean, I can see it being late summer, too. But they've got yeah. Fire Emblem coming out, uh, you know, end of July. Um, I can see it coming out in August, you know, being like a, a mid to late August game. Um, it's a, It has a summer feel. You know, it depends sure. on what the, like, aesthetic of the game is and, like, the, the direction they go in. but. Yeah. Um, oh God, I'm so I'm just so excited for E3. I'm so excited to find out a lot of answers <laughs> to these questions. So yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know what else we got, Danny. We got a few more, right? Yeah, we got so uh, a little little one. We got some news on the past few weeks is the uh, Pokemon skews, uh, Sword and Shield, um, as well as anything from just Game Freak proper. Um, so obviously Game Freak. Just to get this out of the way, they're also making that uh, little RPG called Town. Uh, right. Maybe that's tied in Animal Crossing. That'd be pretty cool. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, as far as what to expect from Pokemon and Game Freak, Game Freak, I do think they'll they'll probably give us a little bit of town. They literally haven't said I think anything since that first direct of 2019 about it. Um, so we'll probably get a little bit more about town, um, a little bit more about what it's about, when to expect it, stuff like that. Pokemon, I don't think too much more. They may show like another. Oh, here's another evolution of uh, Dreadnought. Uh, here's another random Pokemon uh, that uh, the British artist will make. Um, that nice guy, I can't remember his name, but he had a nice little accent. Um, you know, they'll probably show a little bit, but I can't imagine it'll be anything more, especially after the Direct last week and the um, the press conference the week before. I think this will be mild, mild, if anything, Pokemon stuff. Yeah. Um, I can see them... Kind of, yeah, I could see them showing off like a new Pokemon. I don't like, I don't know, like, it, I feel like if they did like go back to Pokemon Sword and Shield, it would be potentially to show off something else, you know, whether it's like content and that's going to be another game. For example, Animal Crossing, right? Like, what if Animal they showed off Animal Crossing and it had like some sort of Pokemon like uh, t shirts or furniture or something in it? Animal Crossing is a game that has a ton of. Uh, call, call shout outs and Easter eggs for other games in it, like items, furniture, uh, clothing, apparel, like, like one of the buildings you can make as a poker center. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be cool? Um, yeah. But I can totally see that like being like a little like subtle nod that they put out. Um, so, yeah, I don't I don't know. Uh, another uh, Pokemon could definitely be a skew of the Switch mini uh, that we see um so maybe they release some more details that way i think if we get new details on pokemon it'll be in the uh nintendo treehouse where they can spend much more time playing and showing off the game versus like taking the 40 minutes which was confirmed 40 minutes of time for the nintendo direct so Mm -hmm. yeah uh i'm gonna say no new news on pokemon until the treehouse i think in the treehouse we'll get um like maybe an evolution another gym leader um but we're definitely going to see a battle in action which i think will include some sort of voice acting which i think would be cool a lot of uh youtubers have pointed out that there are no uh like chat bubbles seen in any of these trailers so oh um, because it'd be the first voice casted uh pokemon game potentially so wow that would be that'd be pretty cool or at least in those cutscenes. so i don't know um and if you yeah. remember pokemon stadium oh my god it was so cool that just like 
And if you left that game on, you would just constantly hear like, you know, Lickitung is eyeing its opponent. Like Charizard is like yeah. sleeping on the job. I don't know what they're Yeah, like, that, that PA announcer, like yeah. he's doing the play by play of the stadium. It would be really cool to see that live. And I think we're going to, I think we are going to get some of that, a uh, taste of that. I think we're definitely going to see the um, Dynamaxing in action. Um, mm-hmm. And I certainly think we'll get more of a, of a look at the cooperative play and uh, Dynamaxing. Uh, with someone or with like the group like a local like local play um yeah. in the wild area but that's pretty much it so yeah yeah i think that'll probably maybe maybe if anything they're one of the remaining four dlc characters for smash maybe there's a you get to play as grookey or some pokemon yeah <laughs> that would be super i'd cool. take that over uh any of the other franchises that i have you know, <laughs> more fire Emblem characters yeah, yeah um all right, so Danny, the Nintendo Switch Online. We've talked about this, okay? Um, yes. But it's a feature that is sorely lacking in features. <laughs> like it's a big sore. It's a big right? old sore. Yes, we're all paying yeah. to have online functionality with the Switch. However, that online functionality kind of sucks. I mean, it gets the job done. Splatoon matches still run smoothly. Uh, I know that, uh, you know, uh, Nintendo Switch um, uh, online battles in Smash are better than they have been on any other console. Um, And I'm sure it's gotten better. I haven't gone on to play an online Smash game in a while uh, between folks. But um, especially because that game, such a fun game to play cooperatively um, or on the couch, you know, local local multiplayer. But uh, I have played a lot of games online and it's fine. However, if they're really trying to incentivize people to pick this up, you know, are we going to see any sort of announcement that's like showing uh, them doubling down on this investment for people? Um, you know, is there going to be SNES games? Are we going to see some of our first SNES games uh, show up? Are going to start trickling those out? Will they announce, um, you know, different versions of the plan instead of twenty dollars? Maybe you pay extra twenty five or thirty bucks so that you can get access to this console or this you know uh these other set of features yeah what are you thinking do i think it's a high chance we get any sort of announcement at all on the online features no actually um other than just saying this new game gets it this new game doesn't get it um but if they do do an announcement do i think there's a chance that we see anything other than a few more snes releases also no um <laughs> i just see this Also being one of those things where everyone and their mother in the industry is like, hey, Nintendo, how about you get on the bandwagon and, uh, you know, I don't know, make do the virtual console thing, do the backwards compatibility, you know, uh, something. Um, And them just being like, but everyone loves the NES and SNES. Why do we need to put anything else there? And we all just continue pulling our hair out. Um, I, I have. Maybe they'll continue to, you know, over the next couple of years, as this console runs its life, um, maybe they'll continue to stabilize it and make it a stronger connection and work with the servers and get all that tech stuff worked out. I really don't have too much more high hopes for the Switch Online service as far as the games they're going to put on there for the exclusives. I mean, like it's just taken them so long to they're not even what uh, a quarter of the way through the SNES library. Um, and it's just like and and we still hold out hope that they'll bring N64 stuff. I'm like, I'm not. Not to be, sound so bleak, I'm not holding my breath for for it to get any much better, bigger. What are your thoughts? I mean, I think it's going to get some sort of highlight. Honestly, I think we'll get SNES games. I don't think it's going to be much. I think most of their announcements around uh, Switch Online are going to come from other games. Animal Crossing, uh, uh, Pokemon, how these things are going to work. If we're going to get an app for different ones, because that's what they do. Um, but yeah, I, I don't have high hopes for it. Uh, but I think if there's any announcement, it's going to be like SNES games are coming. Here are the first five that are actually t- uh, like today you can start. Like, I think it's going to be one uh, definite like they're here now. Um, but yeah, that's that's all. I mean, anything beyond that, I will be livid for because any news at this point is good news. I would uh, assume with uh, Switch Online. So, right. yeah. Um, okay, Danny, we've talked about this again at length in past episodes. This relationship with Microsoft 
and Nintendo, and frankly, any kind of third party at this point. Nintendo is a great, uh, you know, console to put your games on. What's your big hope or prediction for a third party game on Switch to be revealed at this time? So, broken record here. Looking for Spyro. It's a it's a good tie in. They can uh, say that it's going to be you know the the reignited trilogy is coming, uh, and then also say, by the way, Spyro's uh, the next DLC character. Um, that's probably the biggest one for me as far as uh, third party or just you know a a big publisher that's not Nintendo adjacent. Um, Outside of that, you know, there's that scale bound stuff that we we heard a couple months back that like uh, hit fever pitch. And then same thing with the uh, Star Fox racing game just disappeared into the abyss. Um, so maybe that one finally and again, another good opportunity for Nintendo and Microsoft to be like, hey. Spread the word, be friends. Right. And uh, they're like, we we actually finished this game together. Um, and then Phil Spencer and Doug Bowser walk out together holding hands. Um, uh, and then actually going off that same sentiment, Banjo, maybe they bring Banjo, uh, an HD, you know, the remake of those old games. And then, um, same thing. They tie him in that he's one of the next DLC for smash. Um, so that's kind of where I'm thinking as far as, uh, and mostly hoping actually. Um, so yeah, we shall see. How about you? I do think that there is going to be some sort of Microsoft uh, a partnership or announcement. Um, I could totally see um, them showing, let's say, let's say there's the scale bound rumor is true, right? And they show scale bound and then they like zooms out and it's running on the switch. And then someone, you know, they like press the home button and it zooms out and it's the Microsoft uh, X cloud app. And, Phil Spencer Oof, comes out and goes, real big, yeah, right. And then he goes like, yep. And X cloud, even coming to Nintendo switch. We're su- and then they talk about their partnership. You'll be able to play this game, which Nintendo has helped publish, uh, all, you know, on the switch console, along with Microsoft's, you know, slow games. Um, you know, cause it's still an ecosystem that Microsoft controls, but that suddenly now, now they don't have to make a portable console. You know, now they have the despite my deep wishes for an Xbox surface. I just want them to rip off the switch so bad. But anyways, that's just me, I guess. <laughs> so uh, I can see that happening. Some sort of announcement like that. Um, I do think I do think we're going to get Ubisoft uh, Nintendo announcements. It could be more DLC. It could be a Starlink 2 for deals uh, or DLC around Starlink again. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know. We do have uh, Cadence of Hyrule, which will probably get dropped like right then and there. Cause it's, it was confirmed for June. What better way for it than just be officially playable? Conf- originally, I think it was confirmed by end of May, and then it got pushed back. Yeah, they've officially um, they've officially said it's coming in June. Um, right. So now, so now, like, and if they haven't done it before E three, like it's it has to happen at E three. Um, right, and they right. definitely want to show that game off more than they have um, because that's a big partnership. That's one of Nintendo's biggest IP that they lent out to an indie developer. And there will be a, uh, you know, we, we did see on Nintendo's schedule, the Treehouse does have a section for their Nindies. So we'll definitely see Cadence of Hyrule shown off much more than I'm sure. But I do think it'll get a, a shout out in Nintendo's Direct. Um, as, as well as like, a, it's out now. Uh, I, I I I would put down fifty bucks on that, um, but that's happening, uh, and then be wrong, and then be like, "Damn, I could have bought a game with that." <laughs> right, right. <laughs> um, but yeah, otherwise, I think we just got to be. You know, we should be watching Ubisoft. We should be watching. Um, you know, definitely to see if there's any sort of mi- like Microsoft shows off anything in the future. But I think at this point, the balls in Nintendo's court to do anything with Microsoft. Um, and just be like kind of overall looking at all these companies, big and small, to see if there's any sort of Nintendo, uh, goodies there because Nintendo has been much more friendly than they've ever been in their history with, 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 uh, their, you know, their IP and games. So, uh, yeah, Cadence of Hyrule, potentially, uh, scale bound, potentially, you know, some sort of Banjo-Kazooie thing. I do think we'll see Spyro on the Switch. 
Um, I don't know that it'll be announced during that con- the conference uh, for Nintendo's specific direct, as opposed to um, you know someone like a, a who who actually makes it. What studio? Uh, so it was originally Activision, and then uh, I think they still have the licensing rights, but it was remade by Toys for Bob. Uh, okay. So the the reignited HD trilogy is Toys for Bob is the uh, developer, but Activision's publishing it. I, th- I think they are still okay. a publisher. Yeah. So potentially, yeah, but another company to to watch. So, uh, yeah, and then uh, I guess finally, Danny, our one more thing prediction that it could be something that we know is coming a, a traditional franchise a complete surprise what is that one more thing moment going to be because we know it's coming um and it you know shows up in a lot of different ways sometimes the one more thing is during the treehouse um and not in the actual conference but what do you think it's going to be man i the more i'm thinking about it uh, it, there's a good chance it could be Switch Mini. There's a really good chance that could be it, even though we all are mostly kind of expecting something like that. Um, I w- originally, for a while, I thought maybe it's something different. Maybe it's like, hey, guess what? Amazon, Netflix, and who uh, and uh, HBO are now going to be available on the Switch. And I'm like, yeah, but that's not a huge like send off kind of thing. That'd be nice. Um, now that we got YouTube and Hulu. Um, but yeah, I don't I don't really know beyond what it could be like the Switch Mini, um, maybe the X Cloud stuff. Um, but even that seems a little just like odd to be your big send off thing, because it's like so you're handing off the future of your online to a different game developer altogether, publisher entity. Um, I, I actually am really kind of I'm really kind of up in the air about it. I don't know. How, how about you? Do you feel a little bit more solidified into something? Well, whatever comes out, we're super excited. And yeah, we're going to be here breaking it all down, analyzing it and giving all of our thoughts uh, in yet another Nintendo podcast. And so until then, we will see you in the next one. Bye, guys.